So last time we talked about the the inner layer of a turbulent boundary layer. So again, just to, uh, to to refresh our mind, the turbulent boundary layer. If you look at a plot of y, the distance to the wall, and the velocity, it can be split into a inner layer and an outer layer. So the outer layer is so this is the outer layer and uh, this is the inner layer and the inner layer can further be split into laminar sublayer and the log layer but the inner layer is can be considered as uh, universal right because it is not affected by any pressure gradient so in the turbulent boundary layer with high enough Reynolds number, the inner layer of any boundary layer is going to look like the same. So what's the caveat in the assumption? The assumption, for example, we have to assume the turbulent boundary layer is high enough Reynolds number, right? Because uh, uh, that is the scenario where the outer, the outer layer is affected by pressure gradient and the inner layer is much, much thinner. I mean, in the limit of infinite Reynolds number, the inner layer is basically infinitely thin compared to the entire boundary layer. And uh, the pressure gradient of that acting on the infinitely thin uh, inner layer is going to be negligible because the portion, most of the pressure gradient acts on the outer layer. What, also, uh -huh. what Reynolds number, so you said high Reynolds number. Uh, RE delta, right? The Reynolds number uh, based on the thickness of the boundary layer right and also and also any turbulence on the outer layer that is affected by the pressure gradient it has zero influence has no influence on the on the inner layer that's another assumption we have and also the inner part of the boundary layer are the turbulent structures that are smaller for higher Reynolds numbers is also not going to affect the turbulent structure in the outer layer, right? I mean, these are these are assumptions that are really we can we can make reasonable arguments on them, but like uh, nothing mathematically rigorous. But if you have these assumptions, then the inner layer is universal. The inner layer, the velocity scale is u star, the length scale is y star. These are both length scales dependent only on the viscosity and uh, 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 on, the, on the wall shear stress, right? So, so u star uh, is basically square root of tau over rho and uh, y star is viscosity divided by u star. So these are these are the inner the inner layer is the layer that depends on viscosity so the outer layer the only velocity scale in the outer layer is still u star and u star relates to the wall shear stress but not the viscosity anymore in some sense the outer layer is now uh, the outer layer doesn't really know what is the viscosity anymore and that again is a assumption of high Reynolds number flows right so so for very very high Reynolds number flows the flow of the large scale structures of the flow which determines everything like Reynolds stress only depends on the large scale features of the flow the, if the larger scale feature of the flow is not affected by this very small viscosity and only the smaller scales are affected by viscosity, then you can safely assume that as we change the Reynolds number further higher, then the large scale features are not going to change. And therefore, the mean of the profile is not going to change. All right. Question? No? Okay. So the length scale is the thickness of the boundary layer. And again, this is a high Reynolds number assumption because only for infinite Reynolds numbers, the length, 
the total thickness of the boundary layer is occupied completely by the outer layer. The inner layer is going to be an infinitesimal portion of the entire boundary layer at the extreme of infinite Reynolds number. For finite Reynolds numbers, then there is a uh, the, the inner layer for lower and lower Reynolds numbers, the inner layer occupies a larger and larger portion of the boundary layer. And at some point, uh, the, the assumption becomes worse and worse. Right. Okay. Uh, the inner layer we just uh, said has a pretty universal profile, and uh, uh, the spalding profile is usually used to characterize the inner layer. And remember, a significant portion of the inner layer is is linear. So, so y let's say y plus, which is the which is the ratio of y and y star. That can be written as a uni universal function of u plus. So once you non-dimensionalize y and u with y star and y star, uh, the relationship is universal. So this is the linear portion that resides in the laminar sublayer. And then there is a exponential, uh, there is a exponential portion. And this characterizes which part? This characterizes the log layer exactly, right? And then in the intermediate, uh, there is a polynomial correction term. So this is a uh, uh, Spalding's contribution. So it's basically a set of polynomials that uh, that fits the intermediate region between the laminar sublayer and the log layer. And basically, no matter what the boundary layer is, the inner layer has a fixed universal form. And that is important when we are going to consider the outer layer, because as the outer layer approaches the, the wall, we know it has to conform to this profile, at, or at least uh, this portion of the profile, which dominates as u plus becomes much greater than 1. Right? When u plus becomes a lot greater than 1, this exponential term is much much larger than anything else